So now we, uh, after Kunti Parat, we now would like to uh, follow the program by inviting uh, our next speaker, uh, Dr. Leigh Wilson, the senior lecturer from School of Health Sciences, uh, Faculty of Medicine and Health, uh, Univ the University of Sydney, Australia, to share with us the uh, impact of uh, COVID uh, on the environment and the related issues of well being. Please, Dr. Wilson. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Surachai. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, sharing yes. my, trying to share my screen here. Yes, we are uh, waiting. And uh, can you can you see my screen? I can see the screen, but uh, not, not uh, still empty. Still empty. We are waiting. Uh, Maybe the host is now making it possible. <laughs> yes. Oh, Can you see my, my PowerPoint now? Uh, not, not, yet. Yet. not yet from our side, yes. All I can see is Professor Siri Chai. I can't <laughs> I'm sorry. Share my screen. <laughs> uh, so we, while we are waiting, uh, I think uh, the... Uh, oh. Yeah, it did work yesterday, so... Okay. okay. You, you cannot share your screen, Professor Wilson? I'm trying to share my screen. It doesn't... I, and I can see my PowerPoint slides, but it doesn't seem to want to share for some reason, so... Um, yeah, we build your indulgence because something is wrong with the Facebook um, account here. It keeps on bouncing. So uh, uh, Denise is trying to figure it out. Uh, but maybe, okay, okay, there it is. Now, you can see very, now very, uh, very nice. That's, that's actually not the right one. Can I email them to Muwako? That's not the right one. Oh, not the right one. Okay. No, I updated them this morning so I could have all the current, the current um, information. Professor Wilson. Yes. It, can you, can you try sharing screen again? I will. It just keeps jumping around and I can't, I can't seem to get my PowerPoint up for some reason. I'm not sure why this no, is. Oh, so, you... Excuse me, but I, I try to do this. Now it's open. Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can share yes, this. No. I can see. Yes. We'll use those slides, that's fine. Oh, if you no. want. So, uh, Dr. Wilson, please tell me the next slide or something when you want to turn the slide. I'm just, um, oh goodness, what's happening now? Uh, uh, um, I think it might be my computer playing up actually. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm sorry this is not working as well as it could be. Um, and I'd like to thank Professor Sirichai, Professor Emma and Professor Muaku. Um, for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about COVID-19 and how it's affected us here in, in Sydney, Australia, and um, just a little bit about some of the data that we did and collected during our survey. Next slide, please. So in Australia, um, the Director General of Health declared the outbreak uh, a public health emergency of international concern at the end of January and a pandemic on the 11th of March. On the 15th of March, the Prime Minister stopped all incoming sea craft without department approval. And this was because we had quite a lot of um, uh, sh ships coming into Sydney, to the harbour, and disembarking international passengers. And on the 18th of March, the cruise ship, the Ruby Princess, stopped in Sydney, and it had many passengers that were experiencing fever or illness. Um, a lot of those passengers were extremely unwell, and um, were allowed to travel home, except those that were really unwell. Um, and these were transported directly to hospital. And the number of cases that resulted from that led to a Royal Commission being undertaken. 
Next slide, please. So the, the Ruby Princess ship was the initial epicenter of the Australian outbreak um, of coronavirus. There were 22 deaths and more than 600 confirmed cases, including 153 crew members. And the ship was stranded off the coast of Sydney for quite some time. Next slide, please. So that was our initial experience and we, we managed to contain that outbreak reasonably well. But at the end of um, July, or just around the middle of July, we had a second spike um, in Victoria, which is one of our southern states. And this was actually, in the end, much worse than our original um, COVID outbreak, we, resulting in many more deaths and many, many more cases. And you can see here the double spike, the first here in, um, in March and then moving on to the latest spike. Victoria is still in state of lockdown um, because they're still managing their cases. Next slide, please. So uh, at the initial um, spike in March, uh, the country pretty much went into lockdown. There was no playgrounds open, schools were closed, children were being schooled from home, um, businesses closed, and there were lots of restrictions put into place. Next slide, please. Um, because the children were quite isolated, people started putting bears into their front windows so that when people went out for a walk, the children were able to do a bear hunt and count the bears in the windows, which gave them something to focus on. Next slide, please. So this is the status, um, this is actually at yesterday, um, a day before yesterday. So in Australia, our total number of cases was is now around 28,000. Um, we've had 895 deaths up till today, actually. Um, and the bulk of these deaths are actually the result of the Victorian spike. Uh, before the second Victorian spike, we only had 102 deaths um, Australia-wide. And that second spike has accounted for the large, large majority of those. We currently have 304 active cases um, with around about 50 people still in hospital. Next slide, please. So at the beginning of um, the COVID outbreak in March, we um, decided to conduct a survey to look at how this pandemic was going to impact on people, particularly while they were in lockdown. And we looked at um, the areas of interest being um, how they could access the environment, the impact on their mental health and some of the challenges and whether there were any benefits of the pandemic. So we used validated questionnaires, the Kessler 10 and the SF12 and a lifestyle behaviours questionnaire to assess um, lifestyle behaviours. And we also collected demographics and asked specific questions around COVID-19 and how it impacted upon people. Next slide, please. So our preliminary results um, in this study at the moment, we had 105, we're now up to 170 participants. So but this is our preliminary analysis. We found that particularly in young women, um, their anxiety was much higher, around about 50% expressed um, very high anxiety. Only 7% um, said their anxiety was lower. And that was mostly related to the fact that they weren't traveling to work and they were at home with their families. Um, a lot of people were doing um, less exercise, so around about 33% were doing less exercise than normal, um, particularly women uh, more so than men. And around about 22% of women and 5% of men said that it actually had a positive impact on their life. And I'll talk to you about that in a moment. Next slide, please. So the most commonly reported impacts on mental well-being were that people were missing their family and friends, particularly grandchildren, and feeling quite socially isolated. Um, the inability to visit loved ones or attend funeral services overseas or locally was also um, causing a lot of stress and it had a negative impact on mental health. The ability to work from home had both negative and positive impacts on mental health and well-being, um, as did the role of exercise. And people felt that they had an opportunity to do more exercise because they were actually working on home and that was good for them. Next slide, please. So some of the comments in our free text boxes, um, this one's from a mum who said, I, it feels like I'm working much longer. I normally work from home, but having the whole family home has made it harder to balance and to take my children to the park and do my exercise. Um, her work was supportive, but she's been trying to manage children at home and work, and either the work is compromised or I work outside of school hours to get things done. And then my own life balance is compromised. 
Um, another participant said she couldn't take the children out to play. We walked to do the bear hunt, but that's all. There's no childcare for me. So it's all low impact exercise. The gyms are closed and so are the parks. I miss the outdoors and my routine exercise. Next slide, please. So our current status is that um, our states are actually quite varied in their approach to um, the way they're managing COVID-19. Uh, you can see here that Victoria in the dark purple at the bottom here has had the most cases. Um, New South Wales and Tasmania are fairly close behind um, with Western Australia and South Australia um, less and Queensland um, very few cases and again in the Northern Territory very few cases. Um, at the moment the border closures are varied so Victoria's borders are totally closed nobody can go in or out of Victoria without special exemption. Borders between New South Wales and the borders between New South Wales and South Australia are open. Um, we're still using social distancing um, over uh, the four square meter rule. Um, masks recommended on public transport. Everyone is required to sanitise their hands prior to entering all premises and there's still large um, amounts of COVID testing if anyone feels any well. Next slide please. Thank you, that's all I'd like to say and thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you today.